Yeah. All right, guys. <laughs> yep. And then Michelle, you should be can be co-host or yeah, I don't need to be Pamela as long as you are going to be keeping an eye like Kathleen Anderson's going to come into the meeting at some point. Um, she's in the attendee. Um, but either way, if it's easier for you to make me co host, I'm fine with that too. So whatever works for you. So I yeah, can I just I'm going to make Pamela the full host because I'm I'm a little bit worried that if I leave the meeting, it's going to close and yeah. That's a good yeah, idea. Then that's yeah. a okay. different okay. issue. Um, <laughs> and so I know just, that Yvonne is not able to make it. Um, I am going to text Alexis wow. real quick and to see if they are able to make it. And did you just get a notice, Pamela, that you're the host? Uh, I have not, but I will check to see what my status says. Your status says it says no. yeah the status does say host so okay have a good meeting guys all Thank right you, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. talk to you soon bye all right dr shabazz i'm really liking your background <laughs> look at all those books <laughs> swim um okay let's see here i'm gonna go ahead and get us started let me just pull up the agenda um sorry i had it and then something happened here uh let's see here all right so i am calling to order the september 19th meeting of the african heritage reparation assembly pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021 this meeting will be conducted via remote means members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via zoom or by telephone no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means um, and I'm just going to do a sound check quickly. We'll go through if you could just say um, that you can hear us and make sure we can hear you. And I'll start with you, Dr. Rhodes. I'm here and I can hear everyone. Great. Pamela? I'm here and I can hear everyone. Wonderful. And welcome, Alexis. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my God. I didn't know I wasn't muted. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Dr. Shabazz? Cheers, everyone. I hear you fine. Great. And Ms. Bridges. I'm right here. I can hear everyone. Hi. Great. And Hala. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. I can hear you well. Yep. Thank you. All right. So, um, Yvonne, as I said, will not be able to join us today. Um, and I'm going to do a quick review now of the agenda. Um, it looks like we have some meeting minutes to approve. Um, I think Jennifer sent those around, but we'll come back to that. Um, we are going to spend most of our time today talking about our engagement campaign that launched last week at the block party. Um, really, really excited. Congratulations. It was a great launch. We'll get and talk more about that. Um, and then we have CDBG funds um, on here as well. But the two things that we really have to get to today are the engagement and consultation campaign, and then the annual stabilization transfer that you see on your agenda. So um, you may remember, and Ms. Bridges, I can bring you up to speed on this as well, um, because this is sort of before you came on that... Um, Every year uh, about this time now, the finance committee will be making a recommendation about the transfer of money from free cash into the stabilization fund. And that's happening soon. And so I wanted to consult with you all about how we may want to um, send something to the chair of the town council and the finance committee um, formally acknowledging that we are aware that that's coming up and requesting that that happen. So just something to sort of formalize what's already been said um, and making that request again in writing. Although I think, you know, it's been made, but we want to, I think that would be helpful for us to do that. So 
Um, so, and I, we have, um, Kathleen Anderson is in the audience and Kathleen is going to join us for um, some portion of our discussion today about our community engagement. Kathleen has been organizing the Black Assembly of Amherst, Massachusetts, and um, I believe would like to help us strategize and we would like her help in strategizing um, how we can reach more residents of African heritage in Amherst. So before we bring Kathleen in, I just wanna pause and see if there are any general comments or questions right now. Yes, Dr. Rhodes. I just wanna read uh, the last meeting uh, I wasn't at or I had to cut out earlier and, and part of it was to do with uh, the uh, survey. And I just want to make sure that we don't leave that behind. Without a doubt, you are absolutely right. Um, and that is on here as an item. So we can we can discuss that today as well. We were going to get an update from you, I think, last meeting before you had to cut out about your meeting with the Dunahue Institute. So let's definitely make sure that we do that today as well. Um, so let's start with bringing Kathleen in and thank you, Pamela. Um, and just to frame our conversation today and to be really clear about where we are here in this process. So last week, um, our Engage Amherst page launched. I would like us to review it today and make sure that um, at least for right now, it's everything that we hoped it would be. If there are any tweaks that need to be made, I can pass them on to Brianna. Um, and I wanted to go through and just consult with you about a couple things, um, particularly the engagement um, method that we're using for the broader community and see if you have any thoughts and ideas about that. So we launched our Engage page. Um, in addition to that, we launched our portal, our inclusion portal. Um, and that's something that we wanna have a broader conversation about. With that, we produced a bunch of postcards and we wanna talk about now, how do we reach as many residents of African heritage as possible and invite them to include themselves in the portal? Um, and what other steps do we want to take, um, whether it be listening sessions, community forums, anything like that? Um, I can update you all that I believe the Gazette is going to do a piece about our work um, and about the engagement campaign. I know that the Amherst Indy has already posted in there. I'm very grateful to them for that. And um, we should talk about other ways that each of us as assembly members can get that information out. So welcome, Kathleen. Can you hear us? Oh, I was on mute. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's been a, a, a effort, like you mentioned, to um, start collecting the names of the African heritage people who live in Amherst. Um, I think right now, uh, list the list has about 130 names on it. What I have been doing is sending the list to all of the people whose names I have, asking them to look at the list and add names of people who are missing. Mm -hmm. And that has been pretty helpful. A couple of people have been pretty consistent in adding names of missing people. Although <clears throat> I don't have a email address for those people, but I do have their street address and phone number. One of the members has in expressed an interest in placing phone calls to people who don't want to or don't have emails. Hmm. Um, so Christina Sharbai Shab has uh, said that she would make the phone calls to people who um, don't have an email ad address. Um, Hala is going to um, 
set up a Zoom call for next Saturday so that those people who I do have email addresses for, we can meet via Zoom mm -hmm. and, um, and then talk about the seriousness of this effort that is real <laughs> <laughs> and that each of us has a responsibility to follow through and make sure that our um, intentions are discussed and heard and uh, forwarded to your uh, your committee. Other than that, I'm not sure of how to um, get the other names. Well, I, sh I should take that back. When I'm at the grocery store, I stop people who are black people. <laughs> are you a resident of Amherst? Hi, my name is Kathleen Anderson. <laughs> and um, so I've gotten names that way. And uh, idea that the tabling that the AHRA did could be done at the grocery stores. Mm -hmm. That maybe we sit at the, all the grocery parents sitting at the grocery stores and stop all the black people who walk in and are you a resident of Amherst and let them know about the reparations uh, effort that the town has put forward. And uh, meeting in person might also be helpful. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I know Shabazz and I had talked about uh, in-person meeting. Yeah, absolutely. And I know more, more and more people are starting to, again, meet in person. And I do see that as, as really helping the efforts. Um, Dr. Rhodes, your hand is still raised. Is that a holdover from before? Okay. And so um, Kathleen and Dr. Rhodes, just to clarify, as I understand it, um, it sounds to me like half of the list uh, or so of folks that you already have, have been emailed today and uh, they've received the links to the portal and uh, to our Engage page. Is that accurate? Yes, I sent out half of them and Kathleen is going, I think about half of them. I think it's less, actually less than half. I think it's uh, probably a, a third, maybe. Uh, good enough. And then Kathleen is going to take it up on herself to send the rest out. And the reason why she is doing that is that Herb Bros is incredibly incompetent <laughs> in, as regards digital communications. So uh, Kathleen is going to take over. Okay. And Kathleen, do you feel, is that, do you have the capacity to do that in the next couple of days or is that? Yeah, it's just I just will copy and paste the list and put it into the blind copy and send it out. Okay, great. And I think Irv sent you. Oh, I sent you some stuff. Irv sent you. So, um, if you need anything, if you need the um, the digital design with the QR code, I think has been included um, as well as the link directly to the portal. So, whatever you need, though, please do let us know. Okay. Yeah. So the link to the portal is more than just on that. Uh, just on that card, right? Just more than just on the uh, flyer thing. Yeah. Because so that's, that's not linkable. The flyer is not linkable. It needs to be uh, separate. And I think that uh, I saw the link to the portal and to the information page separate yeah. in the email. Yeah. So the email that I provided to you and Irv as a template to use included the Engage Amherst uh, URL, the URL to get directly to the portal, and then the postcard that's the digital postcard. People can put their phone up to that QR code, okay. um, even, even if it's on their screen, they can literally just put it up like that. Um, and that, but you know, you make a point, it may be possible to turn into a PDF for emailing out. And then if it's a PDF, the AHRA engage page will be directly linkable. So I can look into that to see if I can do that. Or I can just go out in an email. Yeah, but I think what you're saying, right, is that the because we want that postcard to circulate. Um, and so uh, if you attach it right now, it's, it's attached as a JPEG. And JPEGs don't allow, like the links aren't, they don't take you anywhere. You'd have to like 
type it in. Like, you know, whereas if I send it to you as a PDF, the link will actually link itself off to the page. But that then makes somebody sense. has to, uh, if it's a PDF, it goes as an attachment. Yes, that's the down. Exactly. That's the down. I mean, those don't actually work for me too well. I agree. I'm <laughs> me too. Which is why I'm saying that I can <clears throat> just send the email with the links that are already included. And the postcard is just another picture that can be, people can see, but they'll have the links already there. That's, that's excellent. That's perfect. Yeah. That works. Um, Dr. Shabazz, I see your hand is up. Yeah. So I wanted to ask if um, I was the portal um, address can be made into like a very short and handy, uh, like perhaps via bit.ly or something. Mm -hmm. Possibility of that. Yeah, I think Alexa showed us last time. We shortened it um, that way, but I think that Bitly would even shorten it further. Um, so we can look into doing that. I don't think that will change. The only problem is, is well, actually it wouldn't matter because the QR code, regardless of what we change that URL to should still take us to the form. So I was just thinking about the 600 postcards that we just printed. <laughs> <laughs> but I think they'll, I don't think they'll be affected if we change it. Although I'm not a hundred percent. It's on the postcard. So on the postcard has just the QR yeah. um, code. So yeah. I, th I don't think that will. No, it won't affect it. It won't. Okay. Perfect. So I mean, yeah. People who are familiar with the QR and doing that, that's going to be great. But we're talking about situations where, if we had just a hand a handy URL for someone that doesn't operate from the um, from the QR codes, it would be good to back it up with with that. I'm seeing right now online it's docs.google.com slash form slash d slash a very long <laughs> alphanumeric string. Now that's been saved to uh, I, I don't have the postcard handy to see what it looks like on the postcard, but. Um, so I'm gonna pull it up for you so you can see um, if it's. So on, I, so Irv sent me a copy of this. All I have to do when I get it is put my cursor on the highlighted uh, URL and it'll take me right there. I don't have to do anything else. Just put my cursor there punch the cursor and it will take me to the form. Yeah, so the cursor works as well, which is really cool. And um, Dr. Shabazz, this is the actual- yeah, I see it, I see it now. Your end, yeah. but uh, I see Alexis's hand is up and I, I bet they have something to say good about this. <laughs> Please, Alexis. <laughs> well, I was, I was gonna say that, um, I think that if we're looking for people to be able to type in something easily, I think that the easiest thing that we have right now is engageamherst.org slash AHRA. That's something that someone could potentially remember where I think even the shortened version of the URL or even a bit.ly, it's still gonna be a bunch of random letters and numbers that like no one would really be even able to remember. So I think that this might be the best way this engage amherst.org slash AHRA feels the simplest and something that you that's... don't have to type it in. You can just click your cursor on it and it goes right to the site. But, yeah, but you have and, a hyperlink. Yeah. Yeah. I guess we were saying in the event that you're not engaging with it in this particular way, I think that I don't know. I don't I don't I don't see it necessarily becoming more simple if we add more types of links. So that's that's just my two cents. I agree with you. So, and that's what I'll send to people or let people know as a, as a link is just to click engageamherst.org uh, slash AHRA, and then go to where it says, click here for African Heritage Black Inclusion Portal. Got it. Yeah, that's perfect. And then um, if we just, I just wanna pull this up real quick. Um, I don't know, let me see. Oh, I'm not sharing anymore. Hold on. 
Um, okay. And so what's on the postcard that we printed as well is that link that you're all referring to. So at least we know that's what's consistently going to be going around. Um, he, somewhere here or there, people may come in contact with that direct link that I've included in some emails, but I think that this is the most intuitive, you know, way to do it. So, um, so let's see here. Um, I had a couple questions just from sort of a manage, managing this stance. Um, I don't know how to stop my share now. How do I do that? Uh, oh, there we go. Okay. I'm so sorry. Something just came up. I got to go. Okay. Okay. Sorry, Alexa. Bye. No, that's okay. Bye-bye. Um, so I just wanted to check in with the group about um, keeping the portal secure. Um, so one of the things that we have on there is that people's register, people's inclusion in the portal will be um there will be a numeric code that's assigned to folks so that if anything is ever made public or talked about publicly, nobody would have their names attached to that um, to keep people very, uh, to keep it very private. Um, but in terms of the assembly, do we want, right now, Dr. Shabazz and I are the only ones that have access to see who is registering. And so I wanted to ask the assembly for guidance about um, whether that should be opened up to all assembly members, whether we keep it as is for now, um, and if there's any feedback on that, I'd appreciate it. Okay. Well, we can continue to think about that and um, and decide how we want to go ahead and manage that. But I think really what's so important right now is that each of us as assembly members um, do our part as much as we can to get this out to folks and to ask folks to share. Um, I made um, and I've already talked to Ms. Bridges. I've already talked to, I think, Dr. Shabazz um, about, Dr. Shabazz already picked up a bunch of postcards, um, but we have about 500 of them. And so I'd love to be able to, like tomorrow, I'm gonna leave some with Ms. Bridges at the Bank Center. Um, and I'd like to coordinate with others, including you, Kathleen, um, to give you the physical postcards. We have lunch together uh, later this week, so I can give them to you then. Um, so are there any other though, um, sort of, I think that, I guess what I'm trying to get at is that there are a lot, there's no one black community. There are a lot of communities um, and there are a lot of um, people maybe that don't even consider themselves to be in a community and we're trying to reach all of them. So um, if there's any thinking about how we might Dr. Shabazz, I know you had some ideas about how you want, thought we could reach some more folks. Um, and do we want to plan some sort of forum or listening session um, now for, say, October um, to invite folks for the first time who would like to come and express them? their views on this. And I'm talking about uh, residents of African heritage. Did you want to speak to that, Dr. Shabazz? Well, I'm op open for others to, to, to weigh in. Um, I certainly feel that the um, uh, some of the things that have been mentioned are good to go, go forward with, such as a, a listening session event. Um, also, to the extent possible, going to events that uh, are being organized. Um, there is, starting this week, the Stolen Beam uh, series. And for the you know, African-Americans who attend, I plan to go with my iPad in hand open to the forum and just uh, to, to talk to people. And if they're interested, let them write there on my iPad if they'd like, go ahead and do it. As I keep telling people in videos and things that I'm making on this, you can do it in, in, a, minute, in, a, in uh, a minute or not more than two minutes. 
uh, to put in all the information, really less than a minute. So uh, I plan to walk with iPad in hand to certain public events that I attend where there might be uh, persons of, uh, of African descent uh, that are there and, and invite them to uh, join, join through the inclusion portal, uh, our process. Um, I think that we are um, also finding some youthful energies out there willing to be boots on the ground to, uh, to go, go places. Uh, the key thing there is really just kind of the roadmap that you aren't just, um, uh, since we're talking about less than 9% of the population of Amherst, th technically speaking, uh, um, only one out of 10 doors you knock are likely to be an African-American and maybe even less than that. So um, you'd be knocking nine doors where there's no one of African descent to get to one before you get to one where, where there might be. So I think we really have to think about how to deploy boots on the ground in a way that can be, that can be most effective and efficient. Later at the end of the, of the, before the meeting ends, I do have some announcements to make of some upcoming reparations events locally, but, uh, but for right now, the only other thing I would add is, is, is that we might think about um, a ground mailing uh, a ground mailing um, uh, based upon. I have uh, some of the um, Town of Amherst registered voters list. This is a list dated uh, from November of last year. There may be uh, there may be a run that's more more up to date than that. I think you were checking on that, um, uh, Councillor Miller. And um, as such, then uh, I've gone through and actually have found names just you know re recognizing people that uh, are not on the uh, the BAM list I've been meaning to transfer those names as I'm finding them to uh, to Kathleen for or Hala for inclusion to the to the BAM list but uh, but these come complete with with mailing address so it could be possible to have a uh, a mailing it may not be only a hundred names it may just be a hundred hundred ad addresses, but, um, you know, that's something we could certainly look at doing to make sure that we're, we're again, covering all bases. I'll stop there. Thank you, Dr. Shabazz. And I did get an updated voter list um, as of just a couple weeks ago. So I have that ready to send to you. Um, so that's available. Um, and I'll just say a couple of things. Um, so I uh, I have a very, very good friend, my best friend, in fact, who's the director of development at the Hitchcock Center. And I asked her if, um, since they're doing a lot of work around climate and racial justice, if they might be interested uh, or would be willing to give us space to use for a listening session at no charge. Um, and they uh, enthusiastically came back with a yes. Um, they will offer us free space. Um, and they will also ask that the bus stop be moved um, for the night of the event in front of the Hitchcock Center so that if anybody is using public transportation, they'll be able to easily access um, the Hitchcock. So I my suggestion is that we get a date set for a listening session and that we use the Hitchcock Center's uh, space. It's a beautiful space um, and they've offered it to us without any charge and very enthusiastically. So if there's no issue with that, um, I will get together with my friend and find out which dates would be available. But if you could give me some general sense of like, is it best to have it on a Sunday afternoon, for example, or should we do um, a weeknight evening? Or what are the general parameters that you would think would be best to draw the most amount of folks? And this will be one of several. So we could start with I think they've they've sort of offered their space for us to use, um, and maybe we do two or three, but we might start with doing one on like a Thursday evening or something like that after, uh, like at, you know, seven o'clock or or after dinner time. Um, I think weekends can be 
more challenging for people to with kids and and maybe I can figure out a way that we could offer child care um, to make this truly accessible. So maybe we can find a way where because it's at the Hitchcock, especially, we might be able to get somebody who can <clears throat> Uh, mind the children that may be there with their parents. So if you have any thoughts on that, let me know. The other things I was, uh, the other piece about the youthful energies. Um, so I am meeting with Cyrus tomorrow, our Amherst, one of our Amherst College collaborators, and I was going to print out the census maps for him and suggest that he use those um, to deploy the senators that are working on this with him. Um, but I know, I think it was you, Dr. Rhodes, that said, or maybe you, Dr. Shabazz, that said, like, some of those blocks that were identified might literally be like all college students, for example. And so how do we um, manage that? Um, I see Kathleen, your hand is up, please. Yes, I just wanted to ask a question about <clears throat> the Cyrus person you mentioned. Yeah. Is that, is that Cyrus Clark? No, this is Cyrus Wheaton. Okay. Is Cyrus Clark someone we should know? <laughs> well, he's he's an adult male who's on the list, has been a longtime resident of Amherst. Oh, okay. Um, I don't have his email address. I see. So I thought if this was the same Cyrus that I would ask you for the email address, but it's not. It's not. Yeah, just to give you a little background. So Cyrus is the um, student Senate president at Amherst College. And we recently, the AHRA has re recently formed a collaboration with the student senators, and they are helping us with boots on the ground efforts to get the word out. Um, and so that's the Cyrus. Um, the other uh, the other couple things that I wanted to respond to that Dr. Shabazz said is the mailing. I think the mailing would be a really good idea once we if we can cross reference, as you said, Dr. Shabazz, the voter list. Um, so I don't know if do you feel like you can once I get you the new voter list, maybe take that on as a OK, great. Um, and then that's all I have right now. Um, in my notes here. Are there any other questions? I'm going to pull up our Engage Amherst page in a second, just to make sure that we're all on the same page about that. But um, in the meantime, if you I have- I do have another question. Oh yeah, please, <laughs> Kathleen, go ahead. So Deborah, do you know the Bosworths? Yes. Yes, do you, do you know if any of them are still in town? Um, I'll have to check. Maybe, I think they're- um in Springfield most okay. of them but there there are one I'll I'll check with it because and then also um Shirley have I saw her uh a while back in the parking lot at Stop and Shop and, and I think she's still a resident of Amherst right yeah I see her all the time I'll talk to Shirley she's my aunt okay <laughs> and yeah. Bosworth is also um related to my grandmother's sister uh-huh so I'll, I'll if there's another one around still here in Amherst. I, I have one on, with that. I have the name of a female Bosworth on my list. I, I can look at it and let you know what it is. Um, but for okay. some reason, I'm thinking that she is, her name starts with an S. Oh, okay. Um, I'll get back to you on that because okay. I know um, the, the Bosworths that I grew up with, I think they're like Janice, but well, I think they're in Springfield. Yeah, I thought I thought a, a much of them, many of them had moved to Springfield. So this yes. particular one, I was um, uh, okay. somewhat surprised. I, I will get back okay. to you um, when I find that out. But I will talk to my aunt. And yes, she's still here. She's 91 and she's still here. Yeah. Uh-huh. And also her daughter lives with her. That's great. Yeah, we it's so okay. important that we sort of get the as much of a spectrum as possible age wise everything, you know, um, so that's great. I'm going to just share my screen here. Oh, Dr. Rhodes. Yes. Wanna, I think I mentioned this to someone. I'm not sure, uh, but uh, somehow we have to engage the schools on this uh, because uh, 
the PGOs uh, interact with huge numbers of parents. Uh, and I'm not sure if they have uh, reinstituted um, open houses for the schools. Uh, I did remember that that was something where uh, huge numbers of parents would show up, especially uh, BIPOC parents. So anyway, uh, the PGOs in the schools, somehow we have to engage them with this. And do you have any suggestions? Does anyone here in the room have contact with any of the PGO coordinators or um, anyone sort of in the administrative, like that would be have access to a mail, getting the mailing list, out, getting something in the mailing list or the newsletter or something of that effect? Uh, Jennifer uh, might be able to help with that. Um, she actually mentioned that there was a PTO um, meeting this week. So. Uh, we can ask her about that. That sounds perfect. And I have a note to ask Jennifer about upcoming events, because I know she's aware of a lot of, uh, you know, the events that are going on in the various communities. So we, that's great. We'll ask her about that. And Herb, I think that's just a really, really powerful strategy. And, um, and even more so, this is a separate topic because it's not on our agenda, but being that you're on the school committee, how can we Im involve um, the school? And I know Dr. Shabazz and I have had some conversations about this. So I'm going to add that to a future agenda um, so that we can really talk about that. Because I know in Evanston, for example, the school system itself has its own reparation committee as a subset of the Evanston reparation committee, the town municipal one. Um, and they have a chair of that committee and that person coordinates with the municipal committee. Yeah, it would be it would be really a good thing for us to strategize around how best to use that resource because it's there. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, I'll add that to a future agenda. Um, and so I'm gonna share my screen here. I just I'd like us to briefly go through the engage page and see what we need to do um to get this uh in the exact place we would like it to be i think first and foremost we need to get a picture <laughs> um that includes all of us <laughs> so um that's something that uh, i'm going to ask paul if we can use the town photographer although oh dr Shabazz, you said you have a photographer is that right well, I had one that that night. He, he was walking okay. with me, but we got there a little late. <laughs> so oh, okay. <laughs> you know, already gone. Okay. I don't know that everybody was there anyway. So, yeah. Yeah. So I think we're gonna have to um, do because everybody's not here today to decide on a day and time. So I I know I didn't have a chance to send a doodle poll out with everything going on, but I will do that, and we'll try to determine a time as soon as possible. Unless I'm just just brainstorming quickly, is there anything that we would all be at um, anyway? But. If if it would incentivize, you know, I I don't mind paying for everybody's dinner for one night, you know, and we all go to wherever we want to go, Savannah's or Hazel's or wherever we want to go, and and I'll pick up the tab if that would incentivize people to all come out in person and get together in one place. Um, at least, you know, my other six assembly members, um, super wealthy ones like Irv Rhodes, I guess, could pay their own way, but uh, <laughs> no, not, not, if you're, not if you're offering to pay. Not an offer is enough. <laughs> you just made the offer. Man. Why would you want to take it off the table? Uh, here's, another here's another question. Uh, can this picture be photoshopped and uh, pictures added? I, I had the same thought i really did <laughs> that's funny because there's like some spots that are open <laughs> um i don't know Wait, it's just a thought if alexis is here i bet you they would have a, a good idea about that and i don't know what the answer to that <laughs> is <laughs> um because it Anything is a great it, it really is a great photo <laughs> can be. It, it, 
one, if you have the permission of the original photographer, and two, if somebody's got the skills to Photoshop, it certainly can be done. Right. Okay. So what else on here? Um, the, the thing that I will tell you, the piece that I'm most challenged with that I, I know Brianna doesn't have a lot, there's not a lot of wiggle room with this, but in this who's listening section here, um, the only ability is to have it be one individual, like, so she couldn't list all of us on this front, you know, so you actually have to click in. Um, and then when you click in, you go to read bio and that's where you actually see the assembly member names, but you have to do a lot of clicking for that. And so, um, I was wondering if it made any sense to have something somewhere further up that would just at least maybe under the mission would just list the assembly members names, um, because, you know, if somebody, if a resident of African heritage comes here and they're looking around and they can't really tell who's involved and there's Jen there, but then there's Brianna, they might not know her, but if they see your names, you know, and I think Pamela, you should also be on here if you, unless you guys have worked out something different. Um, so that's just a thought. Yeah, my... I, I don't think the software program allows for the capacity but we can, you know, we could certainly ask that question of Brianna again. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. And even I know she did say like she could just include our names as text in the content part here. So like right here. Um, so we could do that, too. Um, I wonder if this is a large enough call to action. Uh, the click here for the African Heritage Black Inclusion Portal. Like, should we make that? bigger and stand out more. Um, Dr. Rhodes, your hand is up. Is that, uh, would please? Oh, okay. Um, so, and then we have some ways that folks can be in contact with us. Um, we have links to the AHRA page. And then this was the, so we've moved to the census into this news feed, which I like. Um, but the quick poll for now, because I just wanted to get something up there um, for people to engage with is, um, oh, that's weird. Hmm, what just happened? It's going into the back. Yeah, sorry, I know. Um, let's see here. we are. I don't know why I did that. It's like the serve, the quick poll didn't seem to. Oh, okay. Quick poll. Oh, there we go. All right. So right now, this is just for anybody who comes on a scale of one to five. How much do you know about reparative justice? One being nothing and five being a lot. Um. So that's really just very simple. It doesn't. <laughs> um, and, and so if you have any thoughts about some other, I know Dr. Shabazz, we thought about using the five injury areas as a possibility. Um, oh, doc, um, Miss yeah, Kathleen, <laughs> I see your hand is up. I think you're muted. I thought I had undone the the microphone mute button. I, th I think my hand was just up from the time before. I didn't raise it recently. Okay. Um, so that's where we are there with the website. Um, and let's see. Um, in terms of organizing um, allies, which is on our action and discussion items. Um, we Last week, we had Mary Porcino come to our meeting and she expressed interest. She has groups of people that are um, very interested in supporting our work and helping us. And so she had put together some ideas about how we might do that. 
and she wasn't able to make it to our meeting today. So I said that I would, we would address it, but that we'll come back to that maybe next week when she's able to be here and talk with us about some ideas um, for getting some support from the broader community. Um, part of, I think, what her message has been to me is that there are people in the community who want to get involved, who are interested, but they don't know how to plug in necessarily. And we really haven't created any ways for people to plug in at this point. And our focus really has to be on the African heritage residents in this community right now. Um, and so if somebody else wants to take on organizing allies who are interested in helping support us, I think that would be really, really wonderful. And we just have to figure out the right ways to do that. Um, and so that's that. All right, Irv, I'm going to turn it over to you. Will you tell us um, how it went with Carrie and what feedback you got about doing the survey? Yes, yeah, so uh, Carrie and I talked uh, uh, three weeks ago, probably. And uh, she was really interested in uh, the Ghana Hue Institute getting involved in doing a survey. Uh, and uh, what we spent some time on was doing a survey that was random and representative of the African-American population uh, versus uh, other kinds of surveys uh, that could be done. Uh, what she did indicate to me is that doing a random uh, a random representative sample of the African-American community it definitely could be done, uh, but there would be a, a, a cost uh, that we would, they would have to determine what that cost was and get, get back to us. Uh, and so I said, you know, after I had talked with uh, the group that we would get back to her uh, to, uh, go further with it in, in terms of going further what we would have to do is outline what we wanted to accomplish and if we wanted to do a random a representative sample of the um, african-american population and give that to her and then get a cost estimate for it if we wish to do another kind of a survey then we would have to decide and describe what that survey would be so that's where it is. Thank you, Irv. Yeah, that's great. That's good information. And I think we need to decide maybe after we've given this. And I think what we talked about, Irv, was giving this um, inclusion portal some time, seeing how many folks we get building up there and then um, added to the, into the inclusion portal before deciding which avenue to take with respect to the survey. Is that what yep. you remember? Uh, yes, and just, just remember that, uh, you know, at, at this point in time, uh, our time uh, horizon is shrinking on a week by week basis in terms of our expiration date. So, uh, and things that we need to get done. So we need to keep that in mind uh, if we're going to do this, we're going to have to come to a decision uh, fairly quickly uh, and uh, in terms of uh, how we're going to go about doing a survey uh, and what that survey is going to look like. Uh, and, 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 and keep in mind, there are other people, other groups in town who are also contemplating various surveys of the African-American population. And we need to keep that in mind. It is, as far as I'm concerned, and my two cents, I would love to have uh, an African-American survey done that's random and representative. And I do not see it as a one and done thing. I see it as something that that sample is kept in place and changed over time uh, so, that, so that the town and uh, could go back to it uh, as many times as they wanted to for that sample, sort of like a, a Nielsen kind of a, a survey group that is put together and it's one and done. So the, the cost is spread out over not one time, but spread out over numerous times. Yeah, thank you. And I think you're absolutely right. I know the Board of Health, um, I know that DEI and CRESS have talked about surveys. So I think that 
um, that we need a more coordinated effort, maybe a meeting um, that includes Pamela and Carrie from the Donahue Institute and maybe even Paul and Irv to have that conversation, you know what I mean, to see where there might be cross purposes and what sort of investment does the town really want to make into that right now, um, where, it, as you said, isn't it just a one and done type thing. Um, so, uh, just, I wanted to mention that the CBDG, I don't think that there's really, um, an avenue for us there in terms of funds. Um, the CPA grant proposal period is open. It's closing on September 30th. Uh, they always take CPA application. They also take CPA applications out of rotation, um, but if we wanted to put anything in for CPA, we would literally need to like hand it over to somebody to do it for us in a sense. I don't, I can't imagine, or at least help us because I can't imagine in 10 days that we would be able to get a CPA application put together. Um, and I don't even know what we would be putting together. So maybe it's more that we need to go through this consultation. And then if we want to do an out of cycle, um, so in terms of, however, in terms of funding, do, does the committee have any problem and does the committee authorize me to send a very clear letter to the chair of the finance committee stating that we are aware this decision is going to be made about the transfer, um, and that we are just formally requesting it again. Um, yes, yes, okay. definitely, definitely yes. yes. Okay. Okay, great. Let me uh, address the how I'm seeing the funding piece. Um, and as Dr. Rose has said, you know, I know our time window is compressed, but for purposes of writing the report that we're charged to write, I think maybe over the coming weeks, we can try to schedule time with, for example, the best person with CPA to talk about the scope of what kinds of things they fund, let them, we might could even preface, you know, our invitation to them with a letter or some discussion. I'd be happy to work on that or participate with that to say, here are the kinds of things that might come up from the community in relation to things that we think fall under your uh, four areas that you fund. Um, could you come to us or, or we could workshop it to just a couple of people maybe, as opposed to take one of our meeting times, but then bring that information back so that when we're writing our final reports, we could identify areas that are coming up from our consultations with the community to say, and here are possible uh, funding sources as opposed to us thinking we've got to write a community development block grant right now, yeah. or we've got to we've got to write a CPA grant right now. My vision is is that we're identifying the kinds in our report. We should be identifying the kinds of areas that the community is speaking to, being important areas for for investment, areas for reparative funding. OK, and then from there, the successor body, if should we agree that a successor body be created or a, a community, Black community stakeholders group should come together, then that body would be the one that would vet and would prioritize and conceivably uh, either write for those funds or, um, uh, or endorse, be a space that could endorse for projects that would come before that successor body. So just as an example, if Ancestral Bridges identified uh, a project concerning West Cemetery for certain kinds of um, uh, 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 signage or certain kinds of memorial uh, monument or something that should be there, that clearly might fall under CPA funding and either Ancestral Bridges itself might want to write 
the grant for the project, or they may, or or we may all know an entity that um, wants to to propose that and simply then endorse their proposal. The successor group to AHRA could endorse that proposal from uh, uh, Ancestral Bridges or from whatever other group might say, here is a project concerning the renovation of West Cemetery that would more high, that would highlight more prominently uh, the African American history that is there, the people that are that are buried there, and we and, and that would then be part of the plan, spotlighted in the plan. But I don't think our um, framework uh, right now. Uh, certainly, we can endorse things. If if uh, uh, an LLC I'm affiliated with, Sankofa Gumbo might propose something. Uh, I would recuse my recuse myself from the vote. But yes, we maybe would 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 look at that and say, yes, we endorse and ask for the town, you know, and call upon the town to support that. But I don't think, no, that we, we should be in the business in the few months remaining uh, to go through this consultation process with the community and then to try to write up a plan. And as well as having in the background the possibility of the state legislature for home rule. I think that's still critical because all we're saying there is, and I know the, the town, I heard, I was listening to the town council meeting on this, and I know they're still expecting us to work out eligibility rationales and work out all these things before they would see it. But again, I'm simply looking at it as you create the legislation so that once the um, uh, uh, our plan is submitted, and people see and say yes, and they and if they so choose to create the successor group and so choose to create the ongoing process for this kind of work uh, that we outline that we that we propose, then from there you would have the legislation in place that would go already immunize. The, the 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 town legally and that type of thing because the state would have cleared it but uh, but again I know there's still some things they want to see in the report for example it maybe it's a matter of kind of um, that you know uh, um, maybe identifying what type of individual reparations we think might be in the picture if there is a type of housing program we might envision or housing voucher program similar to Evanston that if that's on the table for us then yes that would involve some individual citizens of African heritage potentially getting monetary compensation and then that's where you need a home rule legislation that protects the town and I heard on this, someone use the phrase, we want ironclad protection. You know, I don't know that there's ironclad anything in, in, in this world, but, but okay, as best as one could protect the town in the same way that, that Evanston stepped out and, and uh, uh, you know, has home rule to protect it, then it's the same thing here. So we've got a lot ahead and no, I don't think we're, we should be in the business right now of trying to, to sponsor uh, um, you know, uh, uh, applications or grants or this type, any more of that type of thing. Um, but we could certainly endorse things that that relate to our mission and that we believe relate. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Shabazz. Yeah, you bring a lot of great points up. And um, I think even just creating a formula for a successor body to be able to work, as you said, with the CPA, with the other granting opportunities um, on an annual basis, that might be a recommendation that we make is on an annual basis, you know, and I like the idea about endorsements as well. While you mentioned the state legislation, I can't talk about it because I didn't put it on the agenda today. Um, in time, but I will say I had an excellent meeting with, um, after I made the agenda, I believe I had an excellent meeting with Mindy and Joe, our delegation. Um, and it, we, I have a lot to report back to this committee about that meeting and the, the legislation. So I'll make sure that's on next Monday's, um, agenda. Let's please do that because I also heard concerning comments from a counselor saying that KP Law had, had established 
a payment framework that was at odds with what, you know, with what the town charter allows. And, and I don't know what KP law document they read versus what I read, but I saw no, no payment scheme uh, uh, in the KP law document that I read. I don't know if anybody else read so I know we're not talking about that now. Yeah. But, uh, but again, as I saw that meeting, I was like, well, what document did they read? Now, it's fine mm -hmm. if you want to say the that the home rule legislation ought to be more declarative about the the regulatory process in terms of that council will get a vote or whatever but again i didn't see that it made any framework about you know the percentage of the council that can vote the money and what money i, I just didn't see that in the i think document. pamela yeah. is trying to stop you and i'm going right. to you, dr <laughs> shabazz um hold that thought i have it written down and it will de and i heard the comment too and and so we will address all of it next week definitely um Okay, that's great. Um, so thank you. A quick question. Yeah, please, Kathleen. Yep. Um, Pamela, Pamela, you are not on our list of black residents of Amherst. <laughs> <laughs> I don't live in Amherst. <laughs> oh. Um, but Pamela will be very much involved yeah. in our process um, just by virtue of her role um, on this committee as our staff uh -huh. liaison. So okay. And, and Deborah, the name was Sean, Sean Bosworth. Uh, I'll look him up. I, he's a relative. I'm pretty sure he's a relative of Janice, but I'll let you know. Yeah, okay. let's, um, if you would, don't mind, Kathleen, it would be yeah, better sorry. for you, you and Deborah to talk offline about that, just so we're yeah. not getting people yeah. yeah. on, yeah. who may not want to be. <laughs> um, okay, great. So let's just, I'm just um, looking here. Um, we've covered everything. Um, was there anything? Okay. So I think I, I, Dr. Shabazz, I noted that you mentioned you had a couple announcements that you wanted to make about upcoming events. Would this be a good time? I don't see anyone. I'm just calling for public comment. The only person that's here Kathleen, you are still considered um, a get, like an attendee. So um, if you wanted to make a public comment, this would be the opportunity to do that. But you're basically in the meeting with us at this point anyway. So, um, <laughs> but it's up to you. <laughs> Say that again, I can make a public comment. I was just saying that by regulation, since you came in, since you're an attendee, I have to call on, I have to call on, you know, to see if you would like to make a public comment, I see. but, but you're basically, you're already like in here with us. You don't have to have a designated time to make public comment right now, but I'm just calling okay. it. In case. <laughs> I, I think I don't have a public comment yet anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, all right. So Dr. Shabazz, um, I, cause I know, I think that at least Ms. Bridges might have to be leaving by 315. Is that true, Ms. Bridges? I think I can stay a little longer. I'm trying to postpone. So I'll stay <laughs> as long as, I, I, I'm here this long. I can do another 20 minutes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And I don't think we'll be that long. I think we really That's did okay. to cover a lot, but I'm going to turn it over Dr. Shabazz. That's okay. Yeah. I think you're muted, Dr. Spaz. Yeah, so I'm sharing just the basics of the five uh, injury areas of systemic oppression and slavery. Uh, the areas are education, criminal punishment, health, peoplehood, wealth, poverty, also land. Um, and so in these, I wish to spotlight for number two, a good uh, discussion around that injury area of criminal punishment. Um, Tassily McKay has a, has a book out entitled Stolen Wealth, Hidden Power, The Case for Reparations for Mass Incarceration. And uh, a program is being organized here at UMass for September 30th, in which um, uh, there, uh, at, from 2.30 to 4 o'clock in the Bernie Dallas room on the UMass campus, uh, with Tassily McKay present uh, on a talk entitled The Time Is in parentheses, never, close parentheses, right, 
for reparations. So the time is right for reparations by Tassily McKay. I can send this information out to, uh, to you all, but it is a discussion of America's long history of unreconstructed racial atrocity, um, in particularly the areas of uh, of mass incarceration, of how um, uh, uh, and the debate over reparations to African Americans and uh, raging in courts and legislatures, uh, um, and across the social sciences, humanities, and law. So um, it should prove to be a very interesting. Uh, meeting and certainly in her the book stolen wealth hidden power the case for reparations for mass incarceration should be a good discussion that can allow us even to think about ways in which mass incarceration and as well as systemic oppression in the area of criminal punishment has adversely affected um, uh, uh, relations in this town here in the town of Amherst um, but more broadly uh, as we were saying earlier in terms of listening sessions or events, if we could get one uh, on education, have it right there at either the middle school auditorium or the, or the high school auditorium and just have a session, I can provide excellent researchers from uh, the College of Education here at UMass, excellent researchers. Um, I'm sure there are to be found in the district itself that can talk about what has been called the achievement gap, the academic achievement gap. That's simply a, a euphemism or another way of putting the case for reparations in terms of education, in terms of education, in terms of the effects of oppression, systemic oppression, uh, anti-Black oppression uh, and slavery in relation to education, the kinds of gaps that have been caused. Um, uh, you know, Lisa Green, Dr. Lisa Green here in our linguistics department and with the Center for the Study of African American Language could certainly speak to ways in which the linguistic effects of racism, of slavery, of, of, misedu of miseducation and limited educational opportunities deprived African Americans from being able to have access to standard, so-called standard American English, and in fact evolved over the years uh, a, a distinct language of their own, African American language, and how the needs for language acquisition can benefit from uh, uh, the, the knowledge that linguists have produced, like Dr. Green has produced in this area. There are others uh, out of our College of Ed, besides linguistics, that could talk about various aspects of the academic achievement gap. And then from there, listen to people. So I don't want a whole long talk session, but at least we could have a few marquee names that could talk about the case for reparations in terms of education and just have it right at the middle school auditorium. You know, Irv Rhodes opening the event as, as one of our, our, our officials on our school committee, okay? And then see what kind of crowd we could attract, both allies as well as especially African-Americans and open the mic for African-Americans to talk about things that were highlighted in the original report by researchers like Mattia Kramer and others that talked about the, 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 uh, the, the disparity in the, in the rates coming out of our high school that are going on to college, uh, black versus uh, uh, the rest of the population, talking about the graduation rates, talking about other kinds of, uh, of, of, of indicators. Are we at parity or are there disparities? And then how reparations can address that. What are proposals for how reparations could address that? Funding for a specialized counselors in the school, funding for specialized folks to work on college preparatory, uh, to give college preparatory assistance to African-American families in need above and beyond the resources that are there in the school that seem to not be enough, okay? So we could have a listening session just on education, set it up right there in the middle school auditorium or high school auditorium. We have this one coming up on September 30th that can provide a wonderful context for looking at mass incarceration and, and criminal punishment as an area. Likewise, the Board of Health has been mentioned and others. I, we have a School of Public Health here, and I know researchers there that could certainly talk about disparities broadly within health, if not research locally on Western Mass or Amherst 
in relation to, to respiratory diseases, heart diseases, diabetes, other areas where African-American morbidity, morbidity far exceeds the rest of the population. OK, black women dying in childbirth, black women dying, you know, at a, at a higher rate than any other group in terms of having a child. OK, so that's just in the area of health. But again, a little bit of talk and then listen, listen to proposals, listen to ideas, listen to what people have to say about ways in which reparative justice could address that in health and so on. I've spoken enough. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Shabazz. Uh, Irv, Dr. Rhodes. Um, thanks for that, Emilka. I think that's uh, there's a lot of stuff in there that you said that we definitely could look at, uh, especially around education. We know we know that here in Amherst, uh, as in other areas of the country, there is disparities in graduation rates, achievement rates, et cetera, and between African Americans and the rest of the population. And certainly that can be examined. Uh, and uh, the other thing, I, the only reason I raised my hand is that I have to leave. And uh, I will uh, be talking with you later. And uh, I think that, again, Emil Carr, you raised, that is a, an excellent idea. And I hope that we follow up on it. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Rhodes. Um, OK, great. So I think. Um, we made, we, this was a great, great meeting. We were, we had a lot uh, come through very quickly. And given that we now are down to just uh, three of us. Yes, Pamela, I'm sorry. I, I didn't see your hand. <laughs> oh, that's right. I just raised it. I'm just going to follow up and say that if you've decided that you are going to use the um, those five frameworks for discussing reparations, um, then perhaps we should act quickly to include them in the uh, Engage Amherst uh, page and perhaps an event associated with each of them so that there would be uh, a thematic uh, a series of events around reparations around each of the five. And that would give you a lot of content for your page as well as um, you know, perhaps assist people with maintaining interest as they knew that the other topics were coming up. So just an, a thought around that. I love that thought. I think that is an excellent framework um, for us to use in terms of the Engage Amherst page and in terms of potential events. So um, let's really try to dig into that at our next meeting and actually get the events on the table. So I plan to come back to you all next week with some dates and times for our first listening session at the Hitchcock Center with child care provided. Um, and then we'll frame this out and see how we can um, coordinate some events. I think this is this is excellent. Um, so I think that we covered about everything on our agenda, and I just want to look for hands to see if there are any other questions or comments right now. Um, and also just to check in, did people have a chance to review minutes? Um, because if not, you did? Okay. So will we be able to approve the minutes that are on the agenda today quickly? Okay. So I am going to move to approve the 5-2-2022 and the 5-9-2022 meeting minutes. Is there a second? A second. Great. And um, I'm going to start with you, Hala. OK. Um, I think um, even if Hala isn't available to vote right now, uh I'm available, sorry. Oh, Hi. that's okay, Hi. okay. <laughs> um, Ms. Bridges? Yes. All right, and Dr. Spaz? Yes. And I'm a yes, so those pass unanimously. Sorry, I can't ask you for a vote, Kathleen. <laughs> um, but it's so great that you're here with us. Thank you so much, Kathleen, for joining us today. Really, really appreciate it. And um, think there will be more opportunities for that as your schedule allows as well. All right. Happy to sit in when I can. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Um, all right. 
so I am going to, if there are no other, um, Pamela, is your hands up? Okay. I'm going to, if there aren't any other comments, adjourn the meeting at 320. And thank you all very much. Great meeting. <laughs> Bye, Michelle. Bye. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>